If you've been using ZBrush Core or ZBrush Mini, you might have already heard Maxon's making some changes. As of May 30, 2025, both versions were placed into what is called limited maintenance mode. This basically means no new updates, no new downloads, and the road ends here for these tools, at least officially. ZBrush Core and ZBrush Mini were originally designed to give users a lighter, more accessible way into sculpting in ZBrush. Core stripped down the full feature set, but kept enough to handle serious sculpting work, especially for hobbyists, students, or even professionals working in stylized workflows or concept blocking. Core Mini, on the other hand, was completely free. It offered just the basics, like symmetry, a few brushes, and enough resolution to get familiar with the digital sculpting process without the upfront cost or complexity. And for a while, the setup worked. It gave beginners a way in, and it gave schools and educators a tool to introduce sculpting without the heavy installing or the hefty price. And it let more advanced users experiment before going all in on the full version. But now the ecosystem is shifting. As I said, as of May 30, 2025, Core is no longer available, I mean for purchasing, and Mini will not be downloadable at all after this date. But you can still use the versions you have. However, there won't be any more features updates or active development. Basically, if it works now, it will keep working. That's it. There is a small window if you are still subscribed to ZBrush Core. Renewals will be allowed until September 30th, 2025. After that, even supports end. For many, this kind of announcement kind of feels familiar. It follows a pattern we are seeing more of lately. To streamline the product line, phase out the lightweight versions, and direct attention to the main product, ZBrush itself, mainly because it is profitable. Since Maxon acquired ZBrush in 2022, we have seen a few shifts in how the tool is packaged and sold. The licensing model changed, updates became more frequent, and they have started building tighter integration between ZBrush and other Maxon tools, like Redshift and Cinema 4D. Now, the question is, what is gonna replace these tools? For the moment, Maxon's only hint is that they are working on a freemium version of ZBrush for desktop. This could mean a new stripped-down version of ZBrush, potentially one that is limited by features but still based on the same core software. Or it might be a time-based demo system, similar what other 3D software have. As of now, there is no release date, no official name, and not much to go on beyond its coming. For those of you with Core Mini, especially if you were using it for teaching, quick sketching, or intro-level sculpting. This change can be a little bit disruptive. Mini is lightweight, easy to install, and simple to pick up, and losing access to downloading it after May 2025 means any of you trying to learn sculpting for free won't have the same option unless you already have installed it and saved it somewhere. So if you're using Core Mini right now, or you were thinking about recommending it to someone, the only option right now is to give them the installation files directly. ZBrush Core users, however, get a little bit more leeway, but the writing is on the wall too. Without updates or support, Core will eventually start to fall behind, especially if Blender or other sculpting tools continue to evolve the way they have been lately. Speaking of which, Blender is a very important part of the conversation. Over the last few years, Blender's sculpting mode has grown fast. It is not as good as ZBrush, and it cannot be a replacement anytime soon, especially when it comes to multi-resolution workflows or high-frequency detailing, but it is getting closer. As for artists who want free sculpting tools that can stay updated, Blender is starting to look more appealing than ever, especially once Score and many stop the support. So where does this leave everyone? If you've been using Core as part of your workflow, it is worth looking into whether the full version of ZBrush is something that you need, or whether you need alternatives like Blender, maybe Nomad, which has its beta release, or even Sculpt GL. The jump in price from Core to the full ZBrush version can be significant, and not everyone needs the full toolset. On the other hand, if you are already comfortable with ZBrush ecosystem, waiting to see what the freemium version of ZBrush desktop can bring might make sense. From a broader view, this move can reflect a strategy that we have seen from Maxon in other areas, like fewer product tiers, more focused support, and a stronger push towards full-feature versions, 
with deeper integration across their suite. For me personally, it is not a surprising decision, but it does leave a bit of a gap, especially for educators and beginners. And since Maxon were not the one to develop ZBrush, since they bought it, you would expect them to pull moves like this, because they ultimately want a financial return on their investment. It was just a matter of time. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.